This video is sponsored by Evil Streetwear. If you like Hell's Paradise or just anime manga in general, definitely feel free to go to the link in the description or pinned comment below to check out the Hell's Paradise merch collection and more. Decapitation demands exemplary sword technique. The human neck, with its vertebrae and thick layers of muscle and sinew, is not something so easily cleaved. As such, to accomplish it in a single, clean cut is a feat few have mastered. However, in Jigo Koraku, Hell's Paradise, there lies a family of ronin who excel in this famed neck flap precision. The Yamada clan is a tribe of samurai tasked with the appraisal of testing new swords on corpses and executing convicted criminals through the renowned method of decapitation. When performing these executions, the Yamada clan's mantra is that the condemned should feel no pain or emotion coming from an Asaimon sword. Within the Yamada clan itself, there actually already exists a hierarchy. However, this position is mostly determined by an Asaimon suit ability to be the next clan head. The swordsman's actual combat skills or mastery over the Tameshi Ito Ryu, the sword style used by the members of the Yamada clan, in general, hold very little weight in this decision-making process. This means that a lower-ranked Asaimon could potentially be much stronger than one of the executioners placed above them. Some thing that you'll see from this list is quite commonplace in the Yamada clan. Regardless of each individual's combat prowess, when granted the name Yamada Asaimon, it is guaranteed every executioner bestowed with that title will at the very least be skilled enough to cut off an individual's dome at maximum one slice. For this reason alone, the Yamada clan was enlisted by the Shogun to accompany a vanguard of death row criminals on the expedition to the island of Shin Senkyo. Otherwise, known as Hell's Paradise. After losing such a large quantity of samurai on different trips to the legendary island in search of the elixir of life, a proclaimed potion of immortality, the shogun instead decided to gather the best warriors under his rule and offer a pardon for their crimes if they come back with his prize. Ten criminals are selected to go on the expedition, and ten Asaimon are assigned to accompany these criminals in order to keep their evil or violent tendencies in check lest they lose their head, of course. Eventually, as events unfold, the Yamada clan sends even more Asaimon to procure the elixir. And with such a faulty ranking system of their own, I figured it would be best to fix that for them myself, using everything we know from Jigo Karaku's 127 chapters. Each Asaimon will be ranked weakest to strongest on the basis of strength, versatility, speed, among other feats throughout the story. Despite all intentions of making this ranking as fair and unbiased as possible, please remember, it is possible your favorite character may not end up where you want them to on this list. Please have mercy. But if you disagree with any of my placements, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Without further ado, I appreciate you clicking on this video. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and let's get right into it. To start the list off, at number 15 and 16 respectively, we have Yamada Asaimon Gagaimo and Sumutsumu. They share the ranking for last place because they both contribute an equal amount to the story. Fucking nothing. Introduced into the story as strong, devoted followers of a Simon Shugen, a much higher ranked executioner on this list. Both samurai declare themselves willing to sacrifice their bodies and be thrown into the cauldrons of hell if it meant following Shugen. Downright begging the Lord to take the two executioners with him on his trip to Shinsenkyo, Shugen denies their wishes, appeasing them by claiming Samutsumo's cooking is a major pillar of the Yamada clan, as well as Gagaimo's swordsman excelling in bringing the local women to the dojo. A very polite way of telling them they're fodder and should just stay home. Due to the ranking system of the Yamada clan, Gagaimo ranks 6th and Sumutsumo ranks 7th. Quite frankly, that means nothing in the realm of battle skills, remember. The father of Asaimon Sigiri, another higher ranked Asaimon on this list. Yamada Asaimon Kijichi is the former head of the Yamada clan, maintaining his position for a long period of time until eventually succeeded by Jika after the events of the island of Kotaku. Known far and wide as an infamous executioner, like all Yamada Asaimon, the man is capable of slicing one's head from its neck in one slash. However, Kijichi's skill was said to be so refined when decapitating a storyteller 
storyteller. The absence of pain, emotion, everything from Kijichi's cut itself allowed the storyteller to finish his tale as if he hadn't even realized he was dead. He gets bumped above Gagaimo and Sumotsumo because he had a hand in creating Sagiri. Man's at least got some good genes. Frankly, the most embarrassing entry on this list. Supposed to be Yamada Clan's number one guy. The man that was talking all that shit in the beginning of the series about Sagiri not being ready to be on the island. A Simon Azen, regardless of all jest, was undoubtedly an excellent executioner and supposed to be the most suitable candidate within the Yamada Clan to become the next head. As skill in combat is not required for a high ranking, Azen was noted to have low stats for physical fighting. Although the Asaimon still thought to himself powerful enough to handle a criminal like Roku Rota, the giant of Bison, someone who normal blades and weapons are said to not work on. Azen was immediately proved wrong in this assumption, as upon his criminal first awakening on the island, the giant turns feral and in one palm strike shatters the Asaimon's sword and his chest, turning Azen into a blood splatter on the nearest tree behind him. Although not lasting long, like many of the other Asimon, Aizen lives on within Lord Shugen, the latter claiming Aizen had the largest impact on his life and crafted Shugen into the Anakin Skywalker clone he is today. 11th in line for the Yamada clan head, a Simon Kisho is assigned to the criminal Warped Kayun and sent off to the island of Kotaku in search of the Elixir of Life. Having one of the shorter lived adventures on the island, his swordsmanship and fighting skills live on in Yamada a Simon Shugen, who claims Kisho's nerves of steel allowed him to easily predict opponent's attacks without the need for Tao, the energy source of the series, which normally allows characters advantages like foresight. With this future sight, a Simon Kisho was able to avoid attacks effortlessly. Unfortunately, this foresight wasn't good enough to see one, Gabimaro the Hollow in an instant pull up and infiltrate his personal space to put hands on Kisho's weapon, and two, that trying to leave the island would meet Kisho with a terrible fate. A Simon Kisho on his return boat ride home at some point underwent a borification, the process one's body takes when blooming with flowers and passing on to paradise. His only advantage over the characters below is the fact he was at least deemed worthy enough to, you know, come. Dreaming of becoming an artist when he was younger, Senta despised the Yamada family business for keeping him from ever achieving that dream. Senta turned to theology and excelling in his studies to cope, which, ironically, resulted in him succeeding so well in the Yamada clan, Senta swiftly rose through the ranks and pushed his dreams of art even further out of the picture, eventually choosing to carry out his role as an executioner. A Simon Senta becomes fifth in line for the head of the Yamada clan and is paired with the criminal Yu Uzariha the Kunoichi during the expedition for the Elixir of Life. Serving as the protagonist's cache of information, thanks to Senta's knowledge of religion and mysticism, the group are able to navigate through the island of Kotaku and ponder the questions of Shinsenkyo much more fluently. Senta's swordsmanship revolved around the practice of fencing, which focuses on quick speed and top-notch precision. Despite his size, Senta was shown capable of reacting accurately to a top-level hermit and villain, Lord Ten. Tenzin Mudan, slashing away both of Mudan's hands before the Lord Tenzin even had time to notice. Senta is also fast enough to save his assigned criminal Yuzariha from one of Mudan's fatal stingers, a sad and noticeable absence in the group early on to the story. Despite being ranked so low, Senta plays his high in our hearts. However, it's undeniable his intelligence was his larger asset. Another example of how the Yamada clan ranks based off of aspects other than strength or physical skills, a Simon Fuchi was given a ranked position within the clan due to his high intelligence and massive success in the realm of medicine and dissection. Fuchi's understanding of anatomy allows him to make medical drugs from scratch, directly from corpses he dissects resulting in a very jaded samurai who doesn't shy away from the macabre. The Asaimon was assigned to criminal Gontetsusai Tamaya for 
for the Shinsenkyo expedition. And despite the massive power difference between the two, Fuji is still able to press his murderous intent on Gontetsu Sai, who from this moment on accepts the small chibi looking as Simon as his caretaker without complaint. Fuji carries two different swords with him that are strapped to his back, one with a hook tip and the other a jagged saw-like edge. However, much like Senta, a Simon Fuji's largest contribution to the protagonist group is his intelligence. Fuji was still able to share a battlefield with the Lord Tenzin and live to tell the tale, something no one ranked below him can really say. During this specific fight against Tao Fa, both Fuji and Gontetsu Sai are at a massive disadvantage against the Hermit due to their low level understanding of Tao as an energy source. Despite this, they are able to work together to outsmart the Hermit, Fuji restraining Tao Fa while Gontetsu Sai lands the finishing blow. Fuji also receives massive damage this battle, showing that regardless of his small size, the Asaimon is impressively durable. Fuji is struck down by Asaimon Shugen when attempting to protect Gontetsu Sai from the former, drawing his last and final breaths performing medical care on his partner before eventually passing away in his arms. This act of kindness would forever change the trajectory of Gontetsu Sai Tamaya's life, who dedicates the rest of his days to building a dojo that prioritizes both swordsmanship and medicinal work. Fuchi forever living on in Gontetsu Sai's eye patch crafted out of Fuchi's sword handle. A man of <clears throat> traditional values, a Simon Genji holds the 8th rank in the Yamada clan and is known mostly for his physical strength and large stature. Best suited towards the martial arts aspect of the samurai way, Genji found himself struggling with other roles of his life. It was only thanks to a Simon Shugen that Genji even learned how to write. Because of this relationship with Shugen, Genji imparts his swordsmanship style of absolute power to Shugen, who displays its ability to overwhelm even Gontetsusai Tamaya, a master swordsman who was also known as unparalleled in eight provinces. According to Shugen himself, this monstrous power is amplified specifically by Genji's wrist strength causing any opponents who end up in a clash of swords to lose by default. While a Simon Shugen is Genji's living legacy and our main lens into his power level, a Simon Genji's actual legacy is falling for and instantly simping for the V-split top, spitting misogynistic rhetoric and then immediately getting turned up for it, then ending his time in the series with a slap to the hip that ends up taking his ass out, dying in complete agony until eventually he's painfully smothered by smoke. Tragic. One of the younger members of the Yamada clan, according to his own admittance, a Simon Tenza isn't really the brightest in the bunch. Growing up on the streets, the delinquent was eventually picked up by a Simon Shion, a higher ranked member and adopted into the Yamada clan to become an executioner. Learning everything he knows from his master Shion, Tenza is able to train and work his way up to the rank of 10 in the family. Although, a Simon Shion develops an unyielding sense of justice due to his ignorance, allowing him to see past the goals of the clan and go against their wishes if Tenza sees otherwise. Tenza is willing to abandon the expedition for the elixir of life with his assigned criminal Nuragai because he feels the child was wrongfully imprisoned and shouldn't be exposed to the island's dangers. When attempting to leave the island with Nuragai, the two of them encounter a large octopus creature that voraciously attacks them with its tentacles. In this situation, a Simon Tenza displays prominent feats of reaction time and swordsmanship, able to cleave through every incoming tentacle to protect both himself and his prisoner. And Later, when encountering Zhu Jin, one of the Lord Tenzin, Tenza, contrary to popular belief, is smart enough to slash through the immortal's eyes to incapacitate it and give them enough time to get away. Despite the hermit completely seeing through and adapting to all of a Simon Tenza's attacks, his spark of courage never wavers, sacrificing himself so both his master Shion and Nuragai can escape from the unknown entity, showing nothing but resolve, amazing character, and the soul drive for both his criminal and master to survive. The two characters, Shion and Nuragai, would never have made it as far as they do without Tenza giving his life at the start. And just for that alone, he ranks above Genji. These guys are all kind of low end anyway, eh? Tenza deserves top of the pack. 
Yamada Asimon Toma, or more appropriately called by his real name, Aza Toma, is the right-hand man and brother of the infamous bandit king, Aza Chobe, born as son to a retainer under Daimyo Asano Takunori. After the Daimyo attacked the court official and disgraced all in his domain, the Aza family was demoted to the level of Ronin, striking the family with poverty. Eventually, the Aza brother's mother died of illness, and after their father attempted to fight for revenge, his life too was stolen from them. With Toma having nothing left to call home but his brother's side, despite the constant tears Toma shed, Chobe consistently carved a path for Toma to follow. When the two of them were abducted by bandits and planned to be sold, Chobe was able to integrate the both of them into the bandit village and eventually become their leader. The two brothers rose to the top over the years until eventually being cornered by authorities. Chobe would take the fall for his brother Toma, telling him to run off and find some way somehow to break him out one day. A pardon for traveling to some island of paradise and retrieving a mythical elixir sounds very convenient. Aza Toma would infiltrate the Yamada clan, within one month excelling so far through the ranks to potentially hold a seated position in line for the head of the clan. Toma's skills as an executioner and blade tester were deemed almost unnatural due to the sheer quick time span the boy mastered swordsmanship. Upon reaching the island of Kotaku, although not having the same knack for adaptability or outright rawness in battle, Aza Toma, taking in everything he learned from the Asimon, is a capable bandit warrior, effortlessly slaying Soshin, low-level hermit enemies, hordes of them even, regardless of his brother Chobei's presence in the fight or not. Toma does reach his first roadblock when facing Gontetsusai Tamaya, the blade dragon or unparalleled in eight provinces. With one hand, Gontetsusai smacks Toma around and frankly just embarrasses him as a swordsman. After, at least how Toma assumes it, losing his brother, Toma swallows his pride and asks Gontetsusai to train him in the art of the blade. After these lessons and Gabimaro's quick uptake on how to control life energy, i.e. Tao, Aza Toma considerably levels himself up, becoming a much fiercer fighter and more confident in his own ability. Choosing to face danger head on rather than play second string, Toma improves enough to strike critical blows on Lord Tenzin level enemies, like in the battle with Ju Fa. He also gains the basic ability to read into enemies' attack patterns and evade easily. Yamada Asimon Toma, despite finally stepping out of his brother Chobei's shadow at the very end, still has a long way to go before he poses a real threat to any of those above him. A young child at the age of 12, Kiyomaru is the son of a samurai who was adopted into the Yamada clan and taken under the wing of a Simon Shugen. Although an unranked executioner, after being trained by Shugen from a young age, a Simon Kiyomaru is a dangerous threat on the battlefield. Using his smaller size to his advantage, Kiyomaru specializes in spin and rotation attacks that utilize his incredible speed and low weight. A Simon Kiyomaru is able to cut down multiple multiple Manshin Hermits, medium level threats upon seconds of arrival on the island of Kotaku, a feat claimed by Lord Tenzin Rien to not be something an ordinary human being should be capable of. Due to his high strength and low age, Kiyomaru's ego makes him quite a rude child. When being questioned on his unnumbered rank, Kiyomaru cuts one of the ninja's masks off and orders another to take their own life, shocked to see the latter ninja actually follow through with that action. Simon Kiyomaru is able to handle Lord Tenzin level threats as well, effectively fighting off Banko infused clones of Ju Fa to clear a path for a Simon Usuzu, a higher ranked a Simon, to land a critical blow on the Banko plant's fire tandem. Unfortunately, the young executioner meets his end after Lord Tenzin Rien dismantles the ship all the survivors are having their final clash on, causing the child to be flattened <laughs> under wreckage. <laughs> The sister of lower ranked Asimon Genji, Yamada Asimon Isuzu, is another executioner on the list to not be an actual place holding member of the clan. As a child, Isuzu was always treated in discriminatory ways due to her stature and dark skin, resulting in one day Lord Shugen stepping in to defend her honor. Asimon Isuzu never forgot this action, vowing to devote her life to Asimon Shugen and his justice. Instead of taking a numbered place in the family, Asimon Isuzu 
Isuzu was employed by the Shogun as a female combat instructor. Isuzu dual wields a pair of swords efficiently to produce rapid slashes and can also combine the blades together to fit different combat situations. Much like her brother Genji, a Simon Isuzu excels in the physical department, strong enough to shatter the ground and send out rubble at her opponent, or even block a Mon Shin's attack, a medium power leveled hermit. When arriving to the island during the second wave of a Simon and Iwagaki or Ninja, Isuzu is shown strong enough to easily slay multiple Mon Shin level hermits. Again, something Rien claims no ordinary human should be able to accomplish. Isuzu can also restrain the Kunoichi Yuzuriha, a pretty high level criminal in her own right. Said to be talented with a sword in ways only few could match, a Simon Isuzu's raw combat ability is nothing to scoff at. She is able to effectively dispatch clones of Jufa, and after only a short while of learning what the energy source of Tao even is, use her element of water to land a critical slice on the Banko plant's fire tand. Isuzu came so close to making it to the end of the story, but she meets her end after being crushed by Lord Tenzin Rien. She would have snitched on us anyway. The artist formerly known as Yamada Asaimon Shion, just Shion, is the former fourth ranked executioner of the Yamada clan and a blind swordsman who has no time for unfaithful women. Shion was blind at birth, born to a traveling street performer that would constantly take advantage of Shion's disability for her show and make profit, even going so far as to purposefully carve the scars into Shion's face for a more dramatic effect during their performance. Because of his lack of sight, from an early age, Shion became aware of the life force that is Tao, unconsciously using it to perceive the world around him. Shion would call this phenomenon the waves. Because of this extrasensory, Shion became quite famous for dodging swordsman's attacks and eventually became recognized by high up members in the Shogunite. Afterwards, Shion was brought into the Amada clan and taught the ways of an executioner. Although having to continue living the life of the lie his mother carved into his face, these humble beginnings would make Xion a great teacher, pulling kids with potential such as a Simon Tenza off the streets and into the fold. Thanks to his understanding of the waves around him, Xion has always possessed great spatial awareness, permanently influencing his swordsmanship and granting him amazing feats of reflexes and agility. Growing up around the art also gave Xion a massive advantage in knowledge compared to most other Simon, a true master of the blade. Xion sports both standard and reverse grip wielding attacks with flawless switching between the two. The man can also do the unsheathed cut resheathed bullshit Virgil from Devil May Cry does. I mean, come on. Xion is easily able to cut down hordes of Soshin upon landing on the island. And after coming to understand their Tao signatures, Xion begins to form a better grip on these waves he's been experiencing his whole life. Learning the properties of Tao in just one day, then becoming a master and integrating this Tao manipulation into his fighting style. Xion is now able to launch his sword like a projectile and accurately aim the attack, as well as defend incoming attacks with 360 degree field of vision. The Executioner is one of the strongest members of the protagonist team, being a critical ally in multiple Lord Tenzin fights. Xion reacts proactively enough to save Sagiri and Yuzuriha from Mu Dan's stingers, as well as continually evade them while running along statues during the Lord Tenzin Kishikai Rage, a Lord Tenzin's Kishikai transformation being their most powerful form. And when up against Mudan said Kishikai form, Xion is not only nimble enough to slice the hermit's attacks out of the air, even once Mudan's stingers actually land and begin to sprout flowers, Xion does not hesitate to cut them out of his flesh with all the precision of a surgical expert, a testament to Xion's durability and resolve as a whole. Ultimately, Xion is responsible for the deaths of two Lord Tenzin, providing the final onslaught of attacks that cuts through Mudan's tandem, as well as going so far as attempting to take himself out with Zhu Jin. Nuragai robs him of that satisfying end though, although it's what Tenza would have truly wanted, and both Nuragai and Xion do get to live happily ever after. But just imagine if that KD ratio was a 2.0 instead. 
the daughter of the head of the Yamada clan, a Simon Sigiri from a very young age was surrounded with death of all kinds. In her own words, all members of the Yamada clan end up making a living off of the dead in some way, shape, or form. And after becoming enamored with the flawless precision and skill in her father's executions, watching him decapitate a man mid-story and not miss a single beat, Sigiri discarded any ideas of living as a normal woman, striving to master the blade and be able to achieve such masterful, emotionless executions herself. A Simon Sigiri dedicated her life to the Yamada clan's practice, despite constantly being looked down upon for being a woman. This sexism would cause her to barely gain a rank seat in the clan. Even Sigiri's own father would judge her harshly for her decision. This discrimination and outcasting would taint Sigiri's goals of emotionless executions, adding a hint of doubt and uncertainty to every slash of her blade, resulting in her victims feeling this harsh emotion upon death. A Simon Sigiri, when eventually coming to the island, would also suffer from this anxiety in battle situations, being deemed a liability by her Simon peers who are unsure if she even has what it takes to eliminate her prisoner, Gabimaro the Hollow. Despite all of this, and a lack of battle experience, her Simon peers and even Gabimaro himself acknowledge that when Sigiri is emboldened and full of resolve, her power level can become uncomparable. Sigiri undoubtedly has superior reflexes and speed compared to most Simon, shown when she is effortlessly able to disarm a Simon Genji mid-attack, block multiple fast attacks from Roku Rota, the giant of Bison, and even Gabimaro the Hollow, who in fighting for the first time, Sigiri is able to essentially perception blitz the well-trained hyper-aware ninja. Sigiri's swordplay, even in a combat setting, is said to be unmatched. Even when going up against Lord Tenzin level threats like Mu Dan, Sigiri, when her mind is put to it, can deliver a massive threat. Solidifying this fact is Sigiri's eventual control over her wood element Tao, which grants Sigiri the extra sensory to read opponents' incoming attacks or suppress her own presence that can be incorporated into her fighting style. Her sensory level with Tao was even stated to surpass a Simon Shio, a Tao user who had been using the life force to essentially see for almost his whole life. When Sigiri eventually completes her character arc, accepting the middle way, one of strength and weakness, certainty and doubt, understanding that one is both and both is one. Her evolution into a warrior is complete, allowing her to contend with the likes of Kishikai form Lord Tenzin Rien, who may as well boil down to Jigo Karaku's ultimate final villain. By coming into her own and finally shedding her cocoon into her final form, a Simon Sigiri is truly a force to be reckoned with. Anyone who's able to stand their ground against Gabimaro the Hollow must be noted, let alone she put the fear of God into this man. A Simon Sigiri, despite taking my heart as the most developed and fun character to see complete their arc on this list. Unfortunately, that's not what we're ranking here today. The former third rank and current head of the Yamada clan, a Simon Jika is our second place entry. Born to a life of poverty in a small town of deception and robbery, even at the young age of 15, Jika was willing to steal and take people's lives if it was convenient for him. At some point in Jika's life, he realized petty thievery wouldn't carve out the path for his preferred lifestyle. And not being the biggest fan of getting sent to war, Jika instead set his sights on being a Samurai of the Yamada clan. After managing to acquire the name of Yamada Asaimon and reaching his high status, Jika immediately began slacking off at his job, showing up for executions intoxicated and spending most of his time with adult escorts. Despite his bad personal reputation, Jika's skills as an executioner were unmatched. Able to cut with such precision and force, Jika can decapitate criminals with a bamboo blade, not even requiring real steel to complete his job. All Although, this is only because Jika sold his actual Asaimon sword for his escapades. From a young age, Asaimon Jika claims to have been aware of a force that guides all of his actions, named the Principle of Things. With this special intuition, Jika can perceive how people or objects will move to the finest detail. In no time at all, Jika analyzes any and all major factors in regards to attack, defense, balance, wind chill, room to 
step alignment, the list continues. This extra sensory is what allows him to slash a bamboo sword as if it was pure steel, using what seems to be actual future sight to always find the perfect path to victory. This perception is used in simple interactions Jika has, as shown when anticipating an Iwagaki or ninja's kunai and applying just the correct amount of force to deflect it back with little effort. But its most significant appearance was Jika's attack on Zu Jin's Banko form, watching all the different potential deaths unfold before him as Jika makes his way to what spot would prove the least fatal, creating the exact correct conditions down to the minutia in order to cut down the monstrosity. The principle of things is said to far surpass even Tao when it comes to sensing. Initially assigned to the killing Buddha Harubo, when the criminal is dusted by Azichobe before even arriving on the island, a Simon Jika is sent back home before the expedition even begins, performing a task left unaccomplished for millennia, if the ship graveyard is anything to go off of at least, and actually slay a Wadatsumi, the octopus monstrosity that guards the island's outer rim, in one cut ending the creature that almost brutalized both the Simon Tenza and Nuragai and stopped any island visitors from leaving the island for thousands of years, until today at least. The crafty and underhanded as Simon Jika, despite laying low and always playing his card from the shadows, is a unique swordsman with a sharp eye for victory. With just a stick of bamboo and a dream, a Simon Jika was able to mastermind his way to the head of the Yamada clan, as well as hide the whereabouts of all the remaining survivors of Kotaku. Great thinking for someone who supposedly hates plans, he's a big go with the flow kind of guy. Unfortunately, when the going gets tough, the tough does indeed get going. A Simon Jika, when faced with a divine beast like Rien's final form, sees no way of victory, choosing instead to spend humanity's final moments drinking himself into oblivion. This proves, despite his overall finesse and skill, even Jika has limits. God Slayer, maybe, but no god. And another one of these limits just might be the biggest threat to Jika's dream of being Yamada clan head. Someone that, despite having multiple opportunities to, Jika avoids like the plague, or has someone else try to take out his dirty laundry for him. Almost like, for Jika, there's no clear way to victory against this guy. And that person would be our number one entry, Yamada Asaimon Shugen. Born as an only child to two shop owners, one night while sound asleep, Shugen's parents were murdered during a robbery by a young 15-year-old Jika. Their deaths at the hands of a criminal influenced Shugen's beliefs around severe, punitive justice. In search of revenge against villains, Shugen would seek out the Yamada clan, being taken in and essentially raised by Asaimon Aizen, who left a large impact on Shugen's life, along with many of his other fellow Asaimo. After being adopted into the Yamada clan, Shugen pledged his life to the Executioner Way, dedicating his sense of justice and self around the family and those around him who would help him grow and become a stellar swordsman. Shugen would eventually earn his title of Yamada Asaimo and rise through the ranks to become second in line for the headship. Shugen had gained a reputation as the strongest member of the Yamada clan clan, with several other members of the clan, including full-fledged ranked Asaimo, enlisting themselves as Lord Shugen's followers. The rumors of Shugen's strength weren't false, as despite being reiterated time and time again, most of Simon not having much combat ability, it would seem as if a Simon Shugen specifically specialized in it, even without his sword. Upon arriving on the island, Shugen is able to defeat an entire horde of Soshin with his bare hands, breaking one's legs and effortlessly lifting its arms. All of this without a single scratch. A Simon Shugen, and this is all just after arriving on the island by the way, follows this action by slaying multiple multiple Mon Shin level hermits, and holds a Doshi, a top level hermit directly under tutelage from the Lord Tenzin themselves, hostage, carving them up until they reveal all information necessary to Shugen at the time. A one-man army, a Simon Shugen stares down a charging brigade of Doshi single-handedly and kills the entire platoon's momentum, having his own Battle of the Bastards moment, and then proceeding to go all around Horai collecting Doshi heads. I mean, this shit is just crazy. 
crazy. Shugen's violence is amplified by his ruthlessness and previously mentioned vindication when it comes to his sense of justice. Besides being known as the strongest of Simon, Shugen also has a reputation for being the most, uh, vitriolic. During a mission where Shugen was responsible for executing Yakuza members, when not feeling like Lady Justice had been satisfied, Shugen began slaying the gang members' family members, grandparents, wives, even infants, to set the balance straight. With absolutely zero mercy running through his veins, Shugen's attack power and combat ability are much more dangerous and bloodthirsty than any on this list before. I mean, even on my other list, honestly. But what truly makes Shugen impossible to pin down is his unique mimicry trait. Spending all of his years with the Yamada clan and developing such a deep relationship with all of his executioner brother and sisters, Shugen has taken a piece of every person he holds dear and into integrated them into his fighting style. By imitating these other Asaimon, Shugen's able to utilize their special abilities and traits in his own combat, allowing him to accomplish feats normally not possible under his own circumstances. For example, by replicating Asaimon Genji, Shugen's arm strength increases dramatically, shown in his fight against Gontetsu's side to instantly turn momentum over to Shugen. Another example would be Shugen's mirroring of Asaimon Kisho and his nerves of steel allowing the swordsman to foresee incoming attacks and effortlessly deliver counterattacks. Although this is an ability that would become second nature for Shugen once he eventually unlocks Tao control. What makes Shugen's mimicry so terrifying is the accuracy in which he replicates the other Asaimon's styles. To the point, Fuchi claims it's as if Shugen becomes possessed by whoever the executioner is imitating at that time. The Asaimon mirrors his fellow executioners so well, Shugen actually is able to to completely change his natural Tao element to the swordsman he's possessed by, which means that despite being born with water elemental Tao, depending on who he's copying at the time, Shugen can use any of the other four Tao elements as well. Driven by the vengeance and extermination of every living being on the island of Kotaku, regardless of injury, a Simon Shugen doesn't find himself flinching when reaching for his goals. After being severely damaged and even losing an arm, the executioner simply adapts to his situation and carries on with his mission, recalling what he learned from a Simon Fuchi and human anatomy to better adapt to his new sword hand, proving that Shugen's mimicry and knowledge extend further than just fighting style recreation. However, besides being fueled by the hate that boils inside of his veins, by the end of the series, Shugen had also ingested some of the elixir of life, granting Shugen a small amount of flower towel that gives Shugen the ability to heal although not to the extent of gaining immortality like Gabimaru or Chobe. Shugen is unable to regrow lost limbs or stave off death, but his body does stop bleeding quickly. Clearly a force of nature, an unstoppable homicidal entity whose rage knows absolutely no bounds. Anakin Skywalker, uh, I mean, Asaimon Shugen is our number one Yamada Asaimon. And there you have it, all 16 Yamada Asaimon, at least those that actually appear in the story, all ranked and explained from weakest to strongest. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Make sure to hit one of the videos on the end screen and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.